Thank you. Um, yeah, as Pe said, um, I like humans. <laughs> I even like users. And I want to talk about what they're good at, because we keep talking about how bad they are at things. We know they're bad. Can we move on now to something else? Perhaps we can just change our machines from putting the users in the situation where they're bad to the situation where they can be good. So, that's the background of my talk. Forgive me. Yeah. It's primarily for all of you who interact with users in any way. If you're doing it by training people, or if you're doing it via UX, or if you're working more like architectural. Um, for the rest of you, well, you are a user. So, yeah. Okay. And also, understanding humans is like a very large field. So forgive me, this is just a short introduction for things I think will be good for you to know. Right. Um, sorry. Can you hear? Mm. A little bit about me. Uh, I started out training as a nurse. That's very much about humans and body and how they are and a lot about observing. But then I decided, you know what, uh, I want to work with humans but not in that way. So I took a bachelor degree in pedagogics. Um, that's educational psychology for the Americans in the room. And uh, after that I decided, you know what, I want to know more about how people think, but this time I want to understand how they think in relation to technology. So I took my master's in digital culture or human-computer interactions. And then I started working with observing people. This is what I do now. I work as a consultant tester. It's a lot about how do people use whatever we're developing at the time. So, Questions for you. You've been very silent and sitting for a while now. Do you like making passwords? Sorry? Do you like making passwords? Hands up if you like making passwords. Okay, now without a password manager. I get you all dice. Well, most people don't like making passwords. Why is that? Why don't you like making passwords? You're at a password conference. You work with this all the time. You know how important they are. Could it be because of this? This is the essence of the situation when we're making a password. It could be email, it could be username, sometimes it's given, it's not something you give yourself or so. But this is it. You're going to make a new password, you sit in front of your computer. That's it. Uh, when you're doing this, you start typing and at some point you probably will get some feedback. Can you remember the last time you made a password? and succeeded making a good password on the first try? No, <laughs> you don't. So, you, because, so the first thing that usually happens, you, you try in this very simple process, you make a password and then you get a feedback that says, you fail at this very simple task. You, don't you know that spaces are not allowed? Did you know that you're not supposed to use local characters like at all for the Norwegians? This is why we hate making passwords, because this is the experience we keep having. I want to know, now I want to change how this look and the situation in general. So instead of making this trap for humans, I want to talk about what humans are good at, so in some point you can influence this. So. Oh. It's not easy to see, but there's some sheep up there. I thought a subtle humor might. Um, your brain. 
The first thing that happens when you see those password forms is that you recognize it. Probably. Recognition is based on previous experience, so um, depending on have you seen it or not, and so on. It, it's a cultural context, but for uh, users, they have seen the user registration form, the password form before, they recognize it, and the minute they, this, no, not minute even, the second they recognize it, something different also happens in their brain, they get emotions. And this happens super fast. That's, that's one of the great things about recognition. It's super, super, super fast. It's connected directly to your senses, to your hands, your ears, and everything. And um, we are really good at recognizing things within our culture. Uh, we are especially good at recognizing faces. When I looked at you, I can see you all have faces, and I, yeah. We are so good at recognizing faces, we even recognize faces when there's none. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the next thing that happens, as I mentioned, when we're doing the password registration, we get emotions. And these emotions are based on what happens before you, you met this form. Which means, even though all you wonderful people will contribute to making password registration forms better, you will suffer for the previous experience and all the bad UX somebody else did. Your users come into your context remembering all that awful experiences. And this also happens super fast, because this is the part of the primordial brain. It's 50,000 years older than your modern part of your brain, the brain that, the part of the brain that's um, responsible for thinking. This is, by the way, very important. Emotions comes before thinking. And then you're supposed to be creative with this form. Right. And uh, creativity is depending. It's, creativity is sort of like a problem-solving process. You're solving something. And the problem with this kind of fields, there's not a lot to solve. There's a lot to recognize and a lot to have emotions about. But it's not really a problem. So you're sitting there, you're looking at this, and it's, you're looking around, and, and if you can imagine this, I would guess you can imagine some sort of company logo up in the corner, and you're sitting at your black screen, at your white desk, on your the chair that's in an office, and it looks pretty much like everybody else's context. And this is all you got as an input to being creative. No wonder that people make the same passwords. I'm actually going to say that it's a, it's a miracle that people come up with password one or Cuverti 24-7. I would say that's super creative given the context. Are you following? Yeah, I see some nods, you know. So, I know this. Uh, as a consultant, I work with a lot of companies, big and small, uh, sometimes alone, sometimes in big teams. And I was working with a small company that didn't have an own <coughs> IT department. So whenever they're going to purchase something that's IT related, they would come to me. I was their go-to person. And they would like, ask for advice and so on. So I would know, approximately, that you know, they're going to make some new passwords now soon, because they were making a bid purchase. So I decided I wanted to test, can I change how they feel about their password making process? I sat down with them for lunch, and uh, you know, I said, ah, oh, you're getting a new computers. 
And they said, yeah, well, you know why you're excited, because you like the kind of stuff. But for us, that's just a tool. It's a hassle getting a new one. But you get to make new passwords. <laughs> and then they looked at me like, are you taking recreational drugs? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. And I said, yeah, it's such a great occasion to be creative. You can make something that's yours. And they were like, yeah, whoa, okay. You can make something nice. I even heard about a guy that changed his life through uh, the passwords. He made passwords that motivated him to quit smoking, among other things. And then we started listening, quit smoking. Most people don't smoke in Norway anyway, but they're interested. This was the kind of uh, field. Uh, yeah, and I heard some one guy who used to be, you know, have his favorite wine as a part of his password. So there's like, you know, you can be creative. And then they were getting slightly interested. They were not enthusiastic, I will say that, but interested enough. And I told them, you know, it doesn't really matter as long as the password is long. And then I was like, yeah, you know, like a sentence, like something fun. You're going to meet this password several times a day. Make it something nice. And then like, okay, fine. We, we get what you're saying. And I said, don't reuse it. Just don't reuse it. You write it down instead. And they will look at me. Can I write it down? We've heard from IT people for years, don't write it down. Have it difficult, upper lower case and everything. I said, sure, you can write it down. You keep the notes safe, somewhere safe. Okay. <coughs> of course, my users don't tell me their passwords. They didn't before, they didn't after. So how do I know that this could, you know, did, did they change their behavior? Yes, I do. Because uh, the project ended, uh, but I came back to see how it was going. And uh, I walked past one of the people in the hall, and she said, stop, and she stopped me. I said, you know what? I like my passwords now. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, managed to do that. Of course, we can't meet all our users one on one, but we can change the way they feel about this. But we have to change the part that we can, you know, control. And the part that we control is the part where they, what they see. So, learning. Learning is incredibly difficult. Uh, I don't expect anyone to be teachers, but are there any teachers in the room? Oh, great. So you know that teaching people is extremely difficult. You can't force them to learn anything. The only thing you can do is facilitate learning and nudge them, like do a little bit of, make it easier to do the thing that you want them to do. So when I tried teaching these others, I can't force them to make new, or I can try, I can make all the negative, the, the angry error messages and make life very difficult. But you know what happens, because IT people are the worst when it comes to uh, working around the password rules. You do that instead. So instead of trying to force them to do make longer passwords, I was trying to motivate them into making better passwords. And when you're working with your interfaces and your projects and your plans, <coughs> what is that one thing you want to teach your users? Have you thought about it? If you can change one thing, because they're only going to look at this form for like a few seconds, so you don't have a lot of time to teach them a lot. Think about one thing you want to change about their behavior, and facilitate that. Now, I want to go back to in the beginning of a password making process when we associate, or actually when we are recognizing. We're doing also association. And association looks a little bit like recognizing, but it also includes the process of adding meaning to things. We add meanings to 
mostly words, sometimes numbers, but we're not very good at numbers. Um, I, I guess it's because the kind of numbers we surround ourselves with, uh, the kind of numbers we usually surround ourselves with are dates and time, not a lot else. But words, we surround ourselves with words and they have meanings for us, like if I tell you, if I say daughter, you immediately have a thought like, okay, you know, I don't have one, or I have one, or that other, you know, you start thinking. But if I say 36, that's not half as inspirational. Now, are you familiar with these fiddly things? Like the tiny, do you have one? Do you use them? Do you love them? No. Why don't you love them? It's just, you know, six numbers, you're gonna look, they will be, it's a calculator, it generates numbers and you're gonna look at those numbers and you only have to remember them for like 30 centimeters and then type it into the browser. It's supposed to like a super simple task and you hate them. Why do you hate that super simple task? It's because it's actually difficult. So you take the little thing and you put it in front of the screen and you look up and down and just like, yeah. And still it doesn't always get, come out right. And then if you do it wrong too many times, your account will be blocked and you have to go through the whole hassle. So, you know, there's a lot of emotions going on here. Uh, in Norway, we have a authentication system that's called Bank Idea, Bank Ida. And when they were doing a mobile application, they decided, you know, people hate the numbers. And we have an opportunity to change uh, this process just a tiny little bit. So they decided they want to reduce the error rates. And the way they did that was going from numbers to words. Uh, if you can see in the background here, you see, I can point at it. There is a fisk. It says stor fisk. It means big fish. So if you can look at the numbers for a few seconds and then look at stor fisk for a few seconds, close your eyes. Anyone tell me what the numbers were? Can anyone tell me what the word were? Exactly. And this was just meant as a, help, a technique to help people. It wasn't meant as anything else, but it's, you know, it means something. Uh, and in the context the people were sitting in, it became humorous. So, among other things, this happened. It's not easy to read. But, uh, so I'm a Norwegian, and one of the most hardcore Norwegian things that you can do is listen to metal music. And anyone knows the genre of metal, you know that a good metal band, this logo should look like, you know, a pile of sticks. That's a good one. Or flames. And it should be hard to read. This one says Sjekbro. It means handsome bridge. <laughs> Oops. Um, and uh, it's a meme with, where the people take the words from Bank Idea and then they generate it in metal fonts. And they tweet about it and post it on Facebook. And like, today I felt like Bank ID really understood me, you know, because it's a sad morning or something. Or wonderful witch. Um, yeah. But you can even buy t shirts with this stuff on. Do you know how many authentication systems that has a fan base from genuine users and not specially interested <coughs> users? I don't know about anyone else. So. Here's a summary. You can take a picture if you want or I can tweet it later. Recognition is one of the things that we're really good at. And we do it fast. It's not super accurate, but it's fast. We have emotions and you have to take those into consideration when you're making stuff because it comes before thinking. Thinking is, uh, when you're having emotions, you, like, the new part of your brain is slower, the modern part of your brain is so much slower than you have the emotions, and then like, the rest of it comes along and it's like, oh, you're, 
you know, you, you probably feel like this for a reason. And then you started justifying how you feel, because they made a bad UX and they hate me and things like that. Um, and then creativity. If you want your users to make good passwords, you have to help them. You have to give them something, you know, that, that, that they can solve, that, that makes sense, that give them something their brains to work with. Give them a picture or some other kind of input. And also don't try to force your users. Just try facilitating it. Perhaps you can change how they, how, what kind of emotion that comes along when they think about you and you know, the process they're going through. And uh, remember the thing about numbers. We're bad with numbers. I think, uh, I haven't checked, but I think we're even worse when it comes to special characters. Um, yeah. Oops, there. I did make a list of further readings because, but you're kind of the diverse crowd. So I made, um, I did, did uh, the one on, sorry, the left, and more like academic things. This is just from whatever I've been reading latest. There's a lot of other very cool things out there. And over here is more um, easy reading. And there's even a video. If you're going to read only one thing, um, please read the one that's called Nudge. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I have the red copy. There's a yellow copy as well. It looks like this. Read this one. It's uh, Sunstein, one of the authors, got the whole bag prize for it. So it's really good and it's influenced a lot uh, UX design and how we think about users and the context they're in. So, yeah. Nope. Questions? Questions. 